Hey everyone, this is lesson 48 and it's reading and writing whole numbers in expanded notation. So um, looking at our learning targets just right off the bat, uh, we're going to write a number in expanded notation then also write a given a number given in expanded notation in standard form. So the inverse of that or the opposite of that. Um, the work that we're going to do today is very much expanded. It's all stretched out. The, the step that will follow up after this, we'll be doing this work, this expanded notation work using exponents. Not quite there yet. This is just kind of the beginning work in using um, expanded notation. So right here, it's basically just how it sounds. Expanded notation or expanded form, both of those things mean the same thing. Sometimes on your assignments, they'll say the word form and sometimes they'll say notation. So be familiar with both. Expanded notation means you're taking this number this is standard form and stretching it out or expanding it out. That's why it's called expanded, stretching it out. So this number right here, we have 3,256. We have three thousands right here, plus two hundreds, two is in the hundreds place, plus five tens, five is in the tens place, plus six ones, six is in the ones place. This is the same thing as this. Now, instead of writing words, this here is expanded notation. We have three thousands, so three times 1,000 plus two hundreds, two times 100 plus five tens, five times 10 plus six ones, six times one. That being said, please give this one a try. Write the number 5,600 in expanded notation and unpause your video when you're ready to check my work. Okay, so I didn't mention this before, but I'm sure you noticed when you're writing numbers in expanded notation or expanded form, the work that you write out in expanded form is done within parentheses. So we have um, something in the thousands place plus something in the hundreds place plus something in the tens place and we work within parentheses and we're adding those together to create one standard form number. So when I took this number and broke it down, I ended up with five times 1,000 because I have five in the thousands place. My number is not done yet, so I'm gonna do plus six times 100 because I have a six in the hundreds place. Notice I don't have anything after that. I don't need to, to put down zero times tenths place, zero times the ones place. If there is not a counting number in those places, you just don't represent them at all in the expanded form. We're done, that's it. Here's another example for you to try. Write the number 750,000 in expanded notation. Unpause when you're ready to check my answer. Okay, so I've unpaused my video as I started to do this work because I started thinking some things in my head that might be crossing your mind too. I went to begin my expanded notation and I started with, well, my first counting number seven, seven times, and I put my one there because I know that when I work with expanded notation, I'm dealing with all powers of 10. So it's gonna be one and some number of zeros, right? But this is a really big number and I didn't know just at first glance what place value I was multiplying this by, how many zeros I needed to include. And I just wanted to tell you a quick trick. If you lose track, if you start to work with a really big number and you lose track, put down a one and then go back to your original number. The one is basically going to be mentally holding the place of the number you're working with. So seven times one, if I envision the one right here, count how many zeros come after that. So we have one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Seven times the hundred thousands place. So if that makes sense, because this right here is worth 700,000, 700,000. That makes sense. I'm going to continue my work on screen with you. Plus, I have another counting number. We have five. I'm going to do the same thing. Five times one. Um, if I envision a one here holding the fives place, I have another zero, comma, zero, zero, zero. And I end up with five times ten thousandths place. And that's true because we this five is worth 50. I don't have any other counting numbers beyond that point, so I don't need to represent them in my expanded notation. I have 750,000. 
Now we're going to try the inverse or the opposite of that. They're going to give us the expanded form or the expanded notation and ask you to write the standard form. So standard form or standard notation, meaning just write the numbers that are represented by this. Please give this a try and an unpause when you're ready to check my work. I wanted to point something out. Just like when we start writing um, numbers in expanded form, and oftentimes when we stretch it out like that, it looks like it's too short because it's a really big number we're working with, but we don't need to represent all the zeros holding place value when we're doing that. Kind of the same thing when you're working backwards. Sometimes whenever there are zeros within numbers in standard form, they're not represented in this um, expanded form. So sometimes this is a trick that I use even. I, I start by looking at the very first number that's being represented, and I have 3 times 100. I know that the number that I'm going to write right now on my screen is going to be at least in the hundreds place long, right? And I know that if we're working with numbers, the hundreds place is three, three spots, three places, okay? Now it's just a matter of filling those in. If I end up with any blank spots, I'm going to fill those in with zeros. So three times the 100 spot, meaning there's a three in the hundreds spot. Done. Plus two times the ones place. So looking here, one of these places is the ones place, and it's this one. And I need to put a two there. Nothing up here was represented in the tens place, and that tells us that